I give my body full permission to change and flow exactly as she needs. In this, there's an opportunity to find gratitude for the possibility of loving myself deeper. This is something that I wish I learned earlier on in my journey. Hello, I wanted to start out by saying thank you guys so much for being here. Today, we're going to be having more of a heart-to-heart -heart discussion. I wanted to talk about my relationship with food and my relationship with anxiety and some tips that I have for you. A little bit of a background, I was diagnosed with an eating disorder when I was about 11. I had anorexia and I still struggle with my relationship with food to this day, but I've been in and out of treatment my whole entire life for it. I was in inpatient treatment for it when I was a freshman. It pulled me out of school for most of my freshman year. I was riddled with anxiety that entire year. I struggled with extreme OCD to the point that it was debilitating and it kind of controlled my life. So. My relationship with anxiety has been okay. I wanted to first talk about anxiety, life. and I think a really important part of emotional that I've intelligence been healing is identifying how life. anxiety feels in our body. This is something that I do daily to check in with myself. First, I start by asking myself, How does this feel? So, for me, anxiety typically resonates as a constant chronic state. I typically feel it in my body in chronic tension in my neck, tightness in my throat, a dis ease in my stomach. I also feel a little bit of dis placed energy that's like bundled up just like ready to act energy so once I ask myself how it feels in my body I can then go and ask myself when are typical times that I experience anxiety and start to identify certain causes or certain circumstances that play a role in the chronic anxiety that I might be feeling acknowledging when I tend to feel anxious allows me to build game plans for myself for when those feelings of anxiety do arise so for me growing up a lot of it was around performance so I felt a lot of anxiety in sports and I felt a lot of anxiety in school My school and my whole routine around school was where my OCD really kicked in I had really bad chronic hand washing OCD and just everything had to be perfect Same with food, it kind of bled into my relationship with food, orthorexia Down to the point of not just it needing to have clean ingredients The food itself needed to be clean to the point where nobody else could touch it I had to wash it and I had to wash my hands before I could eat and if I touched something before I ate, it was a whole ordeal and it all boiled down to this need for control because I felt out of control in my school situation. I felt like I didn't fit in amongst all of these other kids because I just felt kind of like a little bit of an outsider, which now I feel like most of us did feel that way in school and it would have been nice to have these open conversations because I felt like I was the only one struggling and that's part of the reason I wanted to start talking about it on here. I thought I was so weird and so strange in school for struggling so much with anxiety to the point where I literally had a plan that was put in at school after I got back from my first round of treatment where I literally, all I had to do was kind of just like nod at the teacher and leave the room because my anxiety attacks would take over and I would just not be able to communicate what I needed. And I think that's another big thing with anxiety and that's my third tip is to then go in and ask yourself what you need so that you can create a plan that you don't even need to think about when your anxiety comes up. So for me, I needed to be able to leave these situations and get myself out of the classroom when I was feeling this bundled up energy because sitting there was just making it worse. And so I developed a plan with my parents and with the school so that I could leave whenever I needed to. And so that is in your tool belt, um, whether it's school or work or wherever you're at, you always are in control of your body and you are in control of your entire state of being and I think that knowing that you can leave a situation whenever you need to is really powerful another thing that I did was I became my own best friend I would put little things that I know would help me regulate my emotions throughout the day in a box in my backpack and I called it my happiness box and now I make this box for like my friends whenever they're going through times that they need it basically in the box I filled it with all the things that could stimulate the five senses because if you're somebody that struggles with anxiety you might know this but if you don't know this stimulating all five senses can help put you back into your body it's a grounding technique if you're able to stimulate your sight your smell your taste your hearing your touch you're able to place yourself back into your body and this can be really healing and grounding for you so in the box i would put things like a tea bag or a mint or a piece of gum for taste 
I would write myself notes of name five things you can see right now. I also put in essential oils for smell. I wrote myself reminders. I put in little pictures of places that I thought were beautiful so that I could stare at it if I didn't have access to nature. Once you figure out all of this stuff, you're able to create yourself a literal toolbox of things that can truly help you during times that you might feel chronically anxious. I truly find a lot of medicine and just simply validating myself and where I'm at in my journey. Validate yourself in moving through this life exactly as you are because you are not wrong for feeling these things. Our bodies and our minds just want to keep us safe and there are a million things in our lives that might feel overwhelming and just validating the fact that we feel anxious, even if somebody else might not feel anxious about this thing, it takes so much strength to show up despite all of the heaviness of the past realities that you've lived, all of the heaviness of the past burdens and circumstances that you have been through. Let go of the judgment, strip yourself of them because you are so worthy of feeling exactly as you are. You're so worthy of taking up space. You are so valid in every single emotion that you could ever feel. Also drop all of the comparisons. Everyone is walking their own path. What might set one person off might not set another person off. We all have our own tolerance levels for what we can tolerate in our lives. Pain is such a spectrum because one person's pain tolerance might be completely different than another person's pain tolerance and the same goes for emotional pain and emotional burdens. Just because something doesn't cause one person pain doesn't mean it's invalid if it's causing you pain. We might feel more vulnerable about a certain topic and that might cause us more anxiety or more pain around that topic, whereas another person might not care as much about a topic and so they're less vulnerable about it. So just dropping comparisons because no matter where you're at right now, it's valid. I just wanna validate you and encourage you to drop comparisons wherever you can and to drop judgment wherever you can. This is something that I wish I learned earlier on in my journey because as a 11 year old, as a 12 year old, as a 13 year old, I constantly found myself needing to justify how I was feeling but I couldn't explain it. I couldn't put it into words and that would cause me more anxiety. So no matter where I'm at in my life, I always have friends and family members that are aware of my anxious state and they see me and they're always there for me, which I feel extremely grateful for. So if you can and you do have a friend in your life that you can lean on for support, maybe texting them something like this. Hey, I'm not feeling too great right now. I'm feeling pretty anxious. It would be really great to hang out and just do something creative or go for a walk and just have you there with me. Maybe you're not in a place where you can talk about it because anxiety is so interesting. Maybe you don't fully understand it and that's totally okay. Having somebody to talk to is extremely powerful, but also having somebody not to talk to is extremely powerful. Just being in the presence of somebody that you love and somebody that makes you feel safe is super helpful when you're feeling anxious and not like yourself. So when the walls of anxiety feel like they're caving in, there are also quick little coping skills that I have developed over the years that I think would also benefit you if this is something that you struggle with. So I wanted to offer them for you to explore when you're feeling anxious or feeling stressed or overwhelmed. So the number one thing that I do is temperature change. I love to get a bowl of water and fill it with ice cubes and dunk my face in it or put my feet in the cold river or take a hot shower, even just get an ice cube and hold it or rub it in my hands, not to the point of self-harm, just putting that out there, but to the point of being able to change my environment, put me back into my body. When I was really anxious as a kid and I felt really overwhelmed, I was having anxiety attacks, I would naturally go up to our kitchen counters that were quartz and I would lay my face on it and it would just ground me pretty easily. Um, cold windows would do the same for me. So just a temperature change is really helpful. Another thing that I find really helpful is deep breathing. Deep breathing is one of the biggest things for resetting your parasympathetic nervous system. So I wanted to share a couple different deep breathing techniques that I do. One of them is box breathing. So this one's pretty easy. You just count for equal numbers. You would breathe in for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four, breathe in for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four. I like to do a four, seven, eight. So I breathe in for four, 
hold for seven, exhale for eight. So you're going to want to breathe deep into your belly first and then into your chest and then out of your mouth. It's called three part breath because when you breathe into your chest, you're constricting yourself and that is communicating to your body that you are in a state of fight or flight. But when you breathe deep into your belly, you activate your parasympathetic nervous system by stimulating your vagus nerve, which then communicates to your body that you are in a safe place and that activates rest and digest and your parasympathetic nervous system and calms anxiety, which is what we want to do. To do that, you breathe into your belly and you feel it expand. I really recommend putting your hands on your belly for this. So you go, feel it rise into your chest, out your mouth, and you can even put your hand there to feel the heat releasing from your body. It's really helpful. Another breathing technique that I really recommend is putting your hands on your shoulders like this and twisting to your left side while you breathe in. Then as you exhale, you move your body to the middle. So it goes like this. You're going to breathe in, exhale, twist back. And what this does is it activates your vagus nerve and stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system, all of that great stuff. So that one's a great one that I love to do when I can. Another great way to support your body is movement. I love to move my body when I'm feeling anxious. Even if it's just a couple quick jumping jacks, some stretching, going for a run, going for a walk. These are all great ways to help recycle the energy. Yoga is one of my favorite ways. I love to do forward folds. When you fold forward, you are returning your energy back to the earth, which is very grounding. Another great thing is to do self-care. Communicate to your body that you are loved. I love to cook myself meals, make myself warm mugs of tea. I love to draw myself a bath and add Epsom salt, which has magnesium in it, which is calming to the body. I love to turn on some great music and just draw. And that kind of leads me into my next one create something. Recycling energy is really important and a great way to recycle energy is to create something. I find myself very inspired when I'm in states of anxiety, even if that's just splattering paint on something and smearing it around. Honestly, my favorite way is to write poetry. That is my favorite form of creation. So when I'm anxious, a lot of great poetry comes out of it. So that's another recommendation I have for you is to create something. Another coping skill is tapping. So when you tap, you are activating the right and left side of your brain, which then activates the parasympathetic nervous system. So tapping, and this is really simple. You can do it in school, just even tapping your feet back and forth or tapping your thighs, or even just like hugging yourself and tapping. That's a great option. Going into nature, that one's a given. Nature is so healing and it's so grounding. I went on a long walk today when I was feeling a little bit disheveled and just spending, I went for two hours, but even just spending 30 minutes outside in the elements is really grounding to me. I feel like all my worries get swept away when I'm communing with the elements. Self-massage is a great option. I love to, to just like massage myself with oil. I'll take some magnesium oil or some arnica oil and just massage my arms, massage out my hands. I love to give myself foot massages. Those are all great ways to return myself back to my body and remind myself that I'm here and I'm safe and I'm loved and I'm held. Another great one is journaling. I find myself loving to just bring out my journal and just brain dump for three minutes, just put everything and anything that's in my brain out on paper and just get it out. I feel like it takes the jumbled up thread in my brain and just pulls it out and lines it up in this complete line so I can follow it somehow. And it helps my anxiety so, so much. So journaling is something that I've been doing ever since I've, I was diagnosed with anxiety. It was the first thing that was recommended to me and it's been the main constant in my life ever since. So I also wanted to touch on some of my favorite herbs to include when I'm feeling anxious. My favorite herbs for calming my nervous system are milky oats. I also really love lavender, lemon balm. I love California poppy. I love valerian when I can't sleep. I love kava kava. It's a super great anxiety reducing herb, but it's also pretty sedating. So drinking them at night is a great option. I love peppermint. Um, peppermint really helps to calm my brain as well. It helps to disperse energy in the body, which is a great option. St. John's wort is another great one. Talk to your doctor if you're on any medication with St. John's wort because it can be counterintuitive to other medications that you're taking, but I just wanted to add those in because herbs are such a 
big part of my life. Another thing for anxiety is making sure that you're eating enough, making sure that you're eating at least 30 grams of protein at every single meal. Also, if you're not eating enough, you are communicating to yourself that you're in a state of lack, which biologically puts us into a state of fight or flight. So making sure that you're eating consistently throughout the day is really important. And I love to affirm myself, this too will pass. Nothing in this life is permanent. I really love to allow the waves to come in, ride them out, allow them to crash and disperse because I know that no matter what thought I'm getting caught up on, it's going to disperse and it's going to be okay. It's never as serious as I like to believe it is. And that's a really powerful thing to remind yourself that everything will pass. Nothing in this life is permanent and the only constant is change. So. I love to remember this when I'm feeling really bloated or I'm feeling really icky about my body. It will pass. That is not who I am. My body is constantly fluctuating. Why would I define myself by something that is constantly fluctuating? So I just allow myself to rest in the knowing that it will pass. And I'm so much more than what my body looks like. I'm so much more than an aesthetic that society likes to tell me that I am. So I allow it to pass, I ride the wave, I ride the blow, I give my body full permission to change and flow exactly as she needs, and then I arrive back into that depth of the ocean and I flow. I love to see anxiety as an opportunity to get to know myself better. So I use my anxiety as a compass to dictate me towards the areas that I care the most about because when you're anxious about something, it's a key indicator that you care deeply about it and that's really beautiful. If you feel vulnerable about a topic, if you feel anxious about an outcome, that means that you care deeply about it. And so you can use your anxiety as a compass to direct you towards the areas of your life that you truly, truly care about and the things that you are most passionate about. My ability to experience this life so deeply, my ability to care so deeply about this life is amazing. I find it beautiful now to be able to be so empathetic. I find it beautiful to be able to feel deeply, to experience this life in a multitude of ways, to feel sunsets rather than just see them, to be able to feel so deeply and experience a tenderness that I wouldn't have been able to experience if I wasn't a deep feeler. In vulnerability, there's a deep level of care and tenderness. In this, there's an opportunity to find gratitude for the possibility of loving myself deeper. Anxiety is just another doorway to our hearts and to love if we choose to use it. So I really encourage you to reframe your relationship with anxiety, to see it as a tool that you can use to know yourself deeper. I love to ask myself the question, is my anxiety just love disguised? And through this, I can stay curious and I can continue to meet my growing edges. Wherever I feel uncomfortable, I know that there's room for growth and there's room to know myself deeper. And with that, I just want to say that you are so deeply loved. And if you right now are going through a season of life where you're feeling more anxious, I just want you to know that you're not alone, even if you might feel like it. You are completely valid, even if the people in your life may not be able to hold you the way you need to be held. I love you and you're doing amazing. You're doing great. And if you ever need any support, please don't be afraid to reach out. I'm always here for you. And yeah, I just want to say that you're so loved and that I love you. And I hope you're taking care. Go make yourself a warm cup of tea and put your feet in the earth and just soak up some sunshine if you can. I love you and I hope to see you guys soon.